In this video, we're diving into how to run a full site audit using SEMrush. More importantly, how to actually fix the errors that it finds so your website can rank higher on Google. What's going on, everyone? My name is Eric Hunsucker, and on this channel, we cut through the fluff to help you build your first website without wasting time on stuff that doesn't move the needle. If you've ever wondered why your site isn't ranking, even though you've added great content or set up all the right plugins, it might be because of issues under the hood, broken links, redirect loops, slow pages, all that technical stuff that's easy to miss but critical for SEO. Let's fix it step by step using the SEMrush site audit tool. What the SEMrush site audit tool does and why it matters. Before we get into the walkthrough, here's why this tool is worth your time. SEMrush's site audit runs a scan of your entire website and checks for more than 100 technical issues that could hurt your rankings. Things like broken internal links, missing HTTPS, redirect chains or loops, mobile responsiveness problems, pages blocked from being crawled, and even structured data errors. It's like getting an x-ray of your website's SEO health. And best of all, it doesn't just point out problems. It tells you exactly what's wrong and how to fix it. So let's set it up. Want to improve your Google rankings? Then start a free SEMrush trial today and see what you've been missing out on your site. All you need to do is click the link down in the video description to get started. It'll take you right to this site right here where you can go ahead and get started with a free 14 day pro trial. Go ahead and click the link down below in the description and follow along with the video. Step one, setting up your site audit. Now, once you're logged into SEMrush, we're going to go to the left sidebar and click on site audit under the SEO section. If you don't already have a project, you can go ahead and click on create project. Then just add your domain like yourwebsite.com. You can give it a name, which is optional, and then click create project. Next, you'll see some setup options. First is crawl scope. By default, SEMrush will crawl your full domain, but you can narrow this down to a specific subdomain or subfolder if you'd like. Limit the number of pages. If you're not sure how many pages your site has, do this. Go to Google and type site colon your domain.com. Check how many results show up. That's a rough estimate of your page count. Plug that number into SEMrush. Now keep in mind, if you're on the free trial, you're limited to 100 pages per audit. Advanced options, which are optional. Now, if you're just starting, you can skip most of these. But for advanced users, you can choose to crawl the site like a Google bot or a mobile browser. You can exclude specific URLs. You can schedule weekly crawls to run automatically and then click start site audit and give it a few minutes to run. So to navigate there, we're gonna click on SEO over here on the left-hand side and then scroll down to site audit. Now here we have a project going, so I'll go ahead and click on that. Step two, reading the site audit dashboard. Now once the audit's done, you'll land on a dashboard that gives you a snapshot of your site's overall health. Site health score. This is a percentage that reflects how healthy your site is from a technical SEO perspective. Think of it like a credit score for your website. A score in the 90s is great. Anything below 80 probably needs some attention. Below 60, definitely start digging in. Errors, warnings, and notices. So errors are the most critical problems. They're the ones that could hurt your rankings the most. Warnings are less severe, but still worth checking. Notices are more like suggestions. They don't affect rankings as directly. You'll also see sections for crawled pages, robots.txt, and sitemap issues, HTTPS checks, internal linking. Now let's start by fixing the most important stuff first. So as you can see, once you go ahead and run your project, this is everything that we have here. So we can come up and you know, this is the overview right here. We can click on issues here, and this is where we have the errors, warnings, and notices. And the errors are the first thing that you wanna fix, then warnings, and then notices. Step three, fixing critical errors. So what we'll do is we'll click into the issues tab. Now, again, this is where all those problems are listed, sorted by severity. We're gonna start with the errors section. Now, here are some of the most common ones and what to do about them. Broken internal links. So SEMrush might say something like seven broken internal links. Click to see which pages have links that go nowhere. To fix it, log into WordPress or your content management system. Edit the affected page. Either update the link or remove it. Pages with 4xx or 5xx errors. These are pages that return a not found or server error. 404 errors mean that pages don't exist. 500 errors means something's broken on the server side. The solution? Either redirect the broken page to a live one or remove links to it altogether. Non-HTTPS URLs. If your site is loading on 
HTTP instead of HTTPS, Google flags it as insecure. Make sure your SSL certificate is installed and set your site to always redirect to HTTPS. Redirect chains or loops. Too many redirects confuse Google and slow down load times. If a page goes from A to B to C to D before landing, that's a chain. Fix it by updating the original link to go straight to the final destination. So taking a look at our project here, we can see that we've got several pages with 4xx status code. We've got four internal links that are broken, two issues with duplicate title tags, and two pages have duplicate meta descriptions. And again, SEMrush is really helpful here. They have a why and how to fix it. So you can go ahead and click on it and it'll tell you more about the issue and how to fix it, which is super helpful. Step four, digging into warnings. After you clear out the errors, move on to warnings. Now these won't tank your rankings overnight, but they're still important to clean up. Examples, slow page load speeds, missing title tags or meta descriptions, duplicate content, pages with low word count, no internal links pointing to them. Each warning includes a small why and how to fix it tooltip. Super helpful if you're not sure what something means. Now, some of these you can ignore depending on your site setup, but if a lot of pages are affected, it's worth looking closer. Step five, reviewing notices. Optional cleanup. Again, notices are informational. They're not urgent and they don't directly affect your rankings, but they might still be worth reviewing. Things like anchor text being empty on links, pages with only one internal link, no H1 tags on certain pages, missing alt text on images. If you're short on time, skip these. But if you wanna tighten things up, go through and knock a few of them out. Step six, recrawling your site after fixes. Now, once you've made changes to your site, we'll go back to SEMrush and click rerun site audit. This lets SEMrush scan your site again and update your site health score. You'll see how many issues you fixed and whether any new ones have popped up. This step is super important. It's how you track progress and make sure that your work is actually helping. So to do that, right from this screen here, we can go ahead and click on rerun campaign. And that's how we go ahead and get a fresh score after we make those changes. Since I didn't make any changes, I'm not gonna click on it because, well, we didn't change anything. Step seven, tracking progress over time. Now, as you keep running audits, SEMrush will keep a history of each crawl. Just go to the compare crawls section to see how many issues you fixed to spot new problems that appeared since your last crawl to track your site health score over time. Super satisfying to see that score go up. And it also helps you prove that your changes are working, especially if you're doing this for a client or a team. Extra tips for getting the most out of the SEMrush site audit. Connect Google Analytics. If you link your Google Analytics account, SEMrush will prioritize your high traffic pages in the audit. That way you can fix issues on your most important pages first. Use the site structure view. This lets you see how issues are distributed across your site. For example, if all your blog posts live in a blog slash folder and that section has the most problems, you'll know where to focus your time. Set up scheduled audits. So you can actually have SEMrush automatically run audits every week. This is great for keeping tabs on changes and catching problems early before they snowball. Don't hide issues unless you're sure. So you can hide issues in SEMrush, but only do this if you really know that they're not a problem. Hidden issues won't show up in future crawls, and that means you can miss something important down the line. Why this stuff actually matters. Now let's be real. SEO isn't flashy, but it's the foundation that everything else rests on. You can have the best content, beautiful design, and great keywords, but if your site is full of broken links, crawl errors, or loading problems, Google's not gonna send people your way. Running a SEMrush site auto regularly helps keep your site clean, functional, and search engine friendly. Here's what we've learned. How to set up and run a site audit in SEMrush. What the site health score means. How to fix the most important errors, warnings, and notices. How to track your progress over time. Now, if you wanna get started with SEMrush and get your free 14-day pro trial, go ahead and click the link down in the description below. Now, this is an affiliate link, which means we do earn a small commission when you use it at no extra cost to you. And these commissions really help support the channel and allow us to continue to create free content just like this. So if you end up using them, we thank you so much in advance. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Here on the channel, we make videos on how to create websites, explore different website builders, discuss domain names, and so much more, so be sure to subscribe. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you here in the next video. Thank you